Okay everybody, welcome back to Greg's Vintage Workshop. I'm getting ready to get back started on the R654 Mantola. I got my caps in from Sal's capacitor. So this is the original electrolytic and it had uh, a 20, a 30, and a 30. So I've got two 33's for the 30's and 122 and this was 150 volts working voltage and the new caps are 160 so it should be good now I originally was thinking I'd re do the you know restuff this and then I was like nah it'd probably be easier not to but the caps are small enough I can easily restuff this and actually it, it pushed right out very it's probably the easiest I've ever taken electrolytic apart it pushed right out from the bottom I pushed the cap back in the bottom so I'm just gonna go ahead and get these all tied together and show you how I'm gonna do it so I'll be right back okay folks let me show you what I got here so this is what I put together I've got the 22 and the 33 there together on the bottom and I kind of put them together with each shrink wrap. I tied all three, the two 30s, the big 30, the second 30s there at the top, tied the commons all together. The blue wire goes to the 22, the yellow and the red wire go to the 33s and of course the black is the common so that's what we got here. I'm getting ready to stuff those in that original container and then I will fill that up with uh, hot glue to glue it in place so let me get that done and I'll be right back okay so here we are this is the final product it um, came out really fast and really good I mean it, it took me probably less time to restuff this particular cap than it would have to put a terminal strip in there and stuff I went ahead and situated it so that the clamp will still hold it in. I got it with the values up on it. And um, I'm going to quick just check everything here to make sure that um, everything's reading properly now that we're all put together. So let me get my meter on here. And let's make sure you can see. I think you can. I've got the green lead hooked up to my negative, so I'll hook that up to the black wire. Hopefully I'm on screen with you guys. And my white wire is hooked up to my red lead. It's also hooked up to my magnet. There we go. Get back where you guys can see that a little bit better. And the, so the blue lead should be the, the, the uh, 22 microfarad. And we have what? 23.5? Okay. The red lead should be a 33. And we got 30.72. And then the yellow lead should be very similar. This is also a 33. And we have 30.3. So, obviously the capacitors are fine they're not exact but they're fine and they're actually closer to the actual tolerance than uh, than the uh, the 33 being a 30 considering it's supposed to be a 30 anyway so yeah so I'm happy with that so that turned out really well I'm, I'm really long on the wiring but I wanted to make sure that I had enough until I get it in there I'll wind up and see that I got way too much and I probably wasted some wire but better to waste it now and have long enough than be too short so so there it is. Turned out really nice. There's electrolytic. We can start getting this thing together. Okay guys, let me show you something that I've done. I was looking at the schematic and um, I was noticing that the way that this radio is wired they have it switching the negative and not the positive. So what I did, I've got my new polarized, polarized, polarized cord. I've run it in. 
I've tied my UL knot and where originally we used to come in on terminal 2 of the 35 was where they were coming straight in with the hot wire and this 05 at the time that I was putting that in I wasn't paying any attention but that is this 05 right here which needs to be a safety cap I apologize for my horrible camera skills so what I've done is I took this 05 loose I've run my hot lead over to my fuse and then over to the switch I took this 05 loose I'm now running a safety 05 Y, a Y, Y2 and I'm picking it up right here at the fuse and running it down to the neutral down here where this one was so what I'm doing is running the power through the fuse with a safety Y cap 0.05 down to the negative and then the hot leads coming over here to the switch. Now I've got to take the remaining neutral or negatives off of the switch and I'm going to mount a terminal strip here and I'm going to run the new neutral which is right here over to the terminal strip and tie everything in that's currently was hooked up to the neutral to be powered through the switch will come over to the new terminal strip and then I'll run the remaining hot lead from the switch back over here to the 35. So that's what I'm doing. And I've got that portion here done. I've still got to pull this 05 off over here and I still have to run my hot lead over to that. But I want to show you guys that I had caught that I didn't catch it when I was working on it a month ago, but I caught it tonight when I was looking things over and getting ready to mount the um, electrolytic back in there. And I started looking at the schematic a little closer and realized that my error. So, get a safety cap in there. I will reroute the power through the switch instead of the negative through the switch and we'll come back okay folks so I'm gonna point out what we've got here what I've got going on here so this pretty much is is done right now um, as much as I'm gonna do on the bottom so as you can see from the last segment I have got the electrolytic that I stuffed with the 230s and the 20 back in place. I took this um, choke out and took it apart and got that one e-plate back in which wasn't an easy task. It was actually I thought it was going to be easier than it was. It wasn't easy but but I got it. I got it back in there so that's good to go. As I showed you before got the new power cord in there with the UL knot and I ran that over to the fuse got the fuse coming over to the switch and then I've got the switch running all the way over back to the 35 I put a Y2 cap between the fuse and the negative 12 SK7 terminal 5 that I ran that to and then I have the neutral running over here that's probably my UL knot coming over and tacking right here I put this is where I put the little uh, terminal strip I don't know if you can see that or not but there's the nut for the terminal strip there's the terminal strip and I brought this 0.1 cap there along with this resistor 
um, and the neutral and there was a another little wire here that, that came from the volume pot over to that they were tied together on the power switch originally so they came off the power switch so I could run the hot through the power switch put the little terminal strip in there and put everything back together there I've blown everything out I've checked and double checked everything um, per the schematic which I'm holding right here in my hot little hand and uh, I think I'm about ready to take it out of the chassis holder here and take it into the other workshop and start putting the top end together on it and uh, hook it up to the dim bulb in my Variac and see what we get. Okay, so we're getting ready to put the, um, the speaker back on here. And that speaker looks like that. Now I'm going to have to get the screws in there. Which may or may not be all that easy to do. I think I have a screw starter if I can locate it. That might make things a little easier. I'll set that down before it decides to fall down on me. Screw starter comes in pretty handy because it'll hold it nice and stiff. And then I can get this hopefully where I need to have it. Right here, I think. Quite sure. Uh oh. Oh no. Seriously? I put my finger through the speaker, folks. Oh my god. Got that there and I put my finger there. Well, that ain't good. That ain't good at all. Well, shoot. I'm going to go ahead and put this together and we can still check it. I want to make sure everything's right before I have to pull that back off there. And uh, there you saw it live on camera. That's why things sometimes don't work out the way they're supposed to. And getting this screw in here doesn't want to work out the way it should. And I don't quite understand why it's fighting me so hard. Must not be holding that right. There we go. I'll try it like that. There we go. I wasn't holding the angle on the speaker. I was holding the angle like that. And... Uh, Ah, and I could have fixed the speaker. Hmm. I knew this was going too well. You never count your chickens till the eggs hatch, as they say. So, let's go ahead and tighten these down. Speaker's on, I'll be it. Booger it up. So I'd run new new speaker wires, which are what these are. Um, I don't need all this length, obviously. <clears throat> so I'll have to get these um, hooked up. And I think I'll shorten those and hook those off after I get some of the rest of this stuff hooked up. So, let's see here. I'm pretty sure that these wires went up underneath that. But we're not going to worry about that just quite yet because I want to get the tuning condenser over here that we cleaned up. You all probably remember that. You got it all nice and cleaned up and lubricated. That's right. I was going to see if I had some new grommets for that. Let me go see if I got some new grommets for that. Alrighty. So, I got to get a little pair of pliers to cut those old ones out. They're so hard. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm holding this where you can see it. 
These things are so hard. I don't think I could get it out of the hole if I didn't cut it. And I get out of the hole. I do cut it. There we go. took the first one out because I had to match it up. I had to cut it out of there first. Wind up stab myself in the hand if I'm not careful. Alright. There we go. Alright. So now Put a little lubrication on it. A little spit, actually. It usually works. Boy, it's just being stubborn. Almost, but not quite. Took a little persuasion from the screwdriver and get the rest of it seated in there. There we go. We're in there now. I think we're in there all the way. Yep, we are. Okay. There's one. like that shouldn't be as difficult as it turns out to be sometimes you know anyway it's on there it is on there now let me get the little screws in each one remember these are those shoulder screws a lot of these radios have like little inserts that go in there to space it. This one has the little shoulders. So let's see if we can get this on here. Get my cord out of the drawer, I shut it in there. Get you guys a camera. Thank you, fairly in camera. Now I'm going to start wiring these wires up. Well, darn, being a pain, the strength to teach tricks being a pain, there we go, have to get it started better. Okay, folks, what I'm ready to do is um, hook this thing up to the dim bulb tester. M Dodger, would you get away from the camera? Hook this thing up to my dim bulb tester and 
stick the 35 tube in it and see what we get. I don't think I can get you guys in focus to see the dim bulb tester. Let's see here. Dodger, get away from the camera. Alright folks, so this is the dim bulb tester here. I just plugged the radio into the dim bulb tester. That's on. You can't see down here. My variac's down there. Here is my volt amp meter. So, let me find the 35 tube. I tested these tubes after I took them out and I cleaned them up. I had one bad one. I'm trying to remember which one was the bad one, but I had, I had one for it. I think it was the 50L that was the bad one. Alright, so here's the 35Z5. Go ahead and put that in. gloves on just in case all right I'm gonna flip on the variac variac's on turn the radio on bulbs out apparently nothing directly shorted which is good. I'll turn the variac up a little bit and we'll get down so I can turn it and watch my meters. Take it up to about 25 volts. 25 volts. Basically no milliamps, no bulb. Let it sit there for and then take it on up to 50. 50 volts. No milliamps, no bulb on the dim bulb, no smoke, which is a good thing. And let's take it on up to about 75 volts. Still no milliamps, still no dim bulb tester. I say we're, I say we're pretty good. All right, so let's go ahead and shut this down. We'll go ahead and put the remaining tubes in it. So this is the 25 SK7, which goes right here. is the 12SQ7. Which goes right here. This is the 12SA7. This is the 50. Okay, so all the tubes are in. So, let's do this again. Turn on the Variac. Take it up to 25. No dim bulb. Not pulling any milliamps. On. Let's take it on up to 50. No dim bulb. I do have a slight glow from the dial light. We'll go ahead and take it up to 75. 75, a little bit more light out of my bulb. Oh, here's some sound from the speaker. Okay. 
Okay, let's go ahead and that being the case, let's go ahead and take it out of the dim bulb. The dim bulb is not doing anything at this point. We'll take it back up to 75. I see the heater in the 35 and the 50. Some speaker at home. Let's take it on up to 100. That was an off brighter now. station, it's really about the only station we get. Okay, well that's uh, quite encouraging. Let's take it on up to about, about 120. set up and we'll see what we're going to do next. 